All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hope Moments here Monday, April 6th, day after Palm Sunday. Just wanted to get started as we're starting this Facebook Live this morning. I just want to say I thought we had some a great service yesterday, and uh, it was enjoyable watching all the comments that were coming through during the service, but also people that were enjoying the worship, and they were putting out, you know, hand-raised or clapping uh, emojis as they went through, and really enjoyed just seeing the response of the people as they came through in our worship service. And a couple of things I just want to highlight about that real quick. It's going to help segue into what I want to discuss today is, is that we had some new people that were watching. I mean, some new people that were in our church and they were just talking about how blessed they were to be a part, uh, be a part of our church, even though it was a short amount of time. And it was fun to watch our Woodland Park Baptist church members engage with them and just say, Hey, it's great having you here. It's encouraging to have you here. And I just thought that was an awesome time to watch those responses in the middle of praise and worship, in the middle of, uh, in the middle of preaching that we, we paused and we still took time to connect with one another. Secondly, I saw some people, when we did the little watch party, I saw new people that were coming in. And when I saw new people come in, I was like, I don't really know that person's name. Other people did know their name. And we, what we started seeing was is that people were reaching out saying, it's great seeing you here on our Facebook Live. You need to come check out the church when everything's over. You need to come be a part. And it was great just seeing this missional aspect of our believers, even though we're doing virtual church on Facebook Live, even though we're sitting here doing a worship service that's uh, being broadcasted through the internet, that some people were still engaging new people that are potential members, potential people to come and be a part of our church. And that just the response that we were watching that was so encouraging and I just want I just want to encourage you to keep reaching out keep going out and uh, encouraging people on Facebook encouraging people on social media uh, from a distance right from social distance doing it safe make sure that we're still encouraging and praying for one, one another because that's the atmosphere that's the culture we're trying to create here at Woodland Park Baptist Church is that we want it to be an inviting culture we want it to be a place where when people come they feel welcome they feel loved they feel uh, accepted when they get here. And that's the, that's the kind of thing, the atmosphere that we, we as a staff have been working on, but also Sunday school teachers have been working on, small group Bible studies have been working on. You individually have been working on that. That's when we, we say sit in different areas, get to know the people around you. This is a great opportunity for you and those relationships that you have. So I'm gonna encourage you, make sure you're getting to know your neighborhood. Now I know that's a little difficult for us to do right now. And I'm not asking you to do anything that's one, beyond your comfort level, but two, beyond anything that the governor or that the government has posted for us to do. So I'm not asking you to break rules up front. Let me be clear. Don't break rules. Okay. But I do want us to encourage doing one thing, especially when it comes to our spiritual walk, when it comes to how we can grow and how we can minister, how we can uh, uh, be missionaries in our own neighborhood. I want to encourage some things that we can do right now. And that's called prayer walking. And uh, I, just want, I just want to advocate for that. And I think it's a great spiritual discipline. It was funny because while I was, while I was pondering this, I was walking through a neighborhood yesterday. Nobody was around me. It was just me and my daughter. She was riding her bike and I was walking. And I was sitting here thinking of, hey, how can I talk about prayer walking? And I thought about prayer walking. And I was coming up with some ideas about prayer walking. But the one thing I was not doing, I was not praying while I was walking. So... It's easy for us to get caught up in our own thoughts and sometimes so this is a discipline that we're going to need to develop, including myself. So, so when I talk about prayer walking, I want you to understand it's something for all of us to do, something that we can all do. It's easy. What I love about prayer walking is, is that it can go from the youngest to the oldest person in our church. We can be teaching our toddlers that are walking with us or we're pulling along uh, in, in uh, wagons behind us. We can be telling them, hey, be thinking about them and say a little prayer for them. But also here, I was talk, calling people yesterday and one of the persons I called to, I said, how's it going? They're like, I'm doing great. The only time I've been getting out of my house is to get on my bike, ride to the end of my street, turn around and come back just to get a little bit of exercise. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not engaging with anybody, but I'm at least driving. I'm just trying to get some exercise. And I'm like, that's great. But let's add some prayer to that as well. And this helped just encourage what I was trying to think of for today. So, so what is prayer walking? Simple. While you're walking, pray. 
as you're walking through your neighborhood because the governor says you can get out to do some exercise, okay? Don't talk to your neighbors, you know, keep the social distancing and keep it, I would even say, keep it a little extra farther than you, than you would think, okay? But he does say you can get out and do exercise. So if you have to get out and walk your neighborhood just to burn some energy as you're going stir crazy, I want you as you're walking by the homes, just pray for those homes. You may know the names of the people that live in those homes. Pray for them individually by name. You may also be walking by, what am I looking for when I'm praying? Well, if I don't know a house and I'm walking by and I see that they have bikes out in the front or they have toys out, they probably have kids or grandkids at least. So I'm praying not just for the moms and dads or the adults in the house, I'm praying also for the kids as well. So make sure that when you're praying, you're looking for key things. Sometimes they have stands out there that says, hey, my kid goes to this school. It shows an indicator they got a youth in their house and that that's someone you can be praying for lifting up. So pray for them. What are we praying for? We're praying for God to move in their life. We're praying for God to move in their life because there's nothing that we can do to give them salvation if God's not moving in their life. So we're praying for one, God to move in their life. We're praying for strongholds in their life to be bro broken down. What I mean by strongholds, I'm talking about things that distract them from God. Habits that they've already created. Habits that you may have been a part of as well before your life with Christ, but habits that they have in their life that just barriers that need to get taken down in their life so they can see God clearly. So we're going to be praying for those barriers. I'm, I'm going to go even farther to say this. Pray for, for Satan just to uh, not flare up in their life because if they're not thinking of anything of God and they start thinking of God, that's where Satan gets upset about. So even pray that God's pouring out blessings on their life so they can see God moving in their life as well. But I also want to say, look for opportunities as you're praying. Look for opportunities. And it may not be now, but down the road when this is over, there's going to be a lot of fallout uh, economically, even with uh, students and, and other things that are going on. So what I want you to look at, what I want you to see, is how can you minister even when this is over? that we can sit there and that we can say, hey, here are your needs as you go forward, okay? So look for other ways, look for opportunities that may be down the road as we go, all right? I'm gonna pause real quick. What is it, Reese? You're sideways, apparently. Sideways. The video's sideways. Are the commenting that I'm sideways? I mean, you look like this too. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do about sideways. Mm -hmm. I don't have my normal assistant here to help me. So I'm gonna keep going and y'all can turn your heads, okay? Or turn your monitors, that'll be good too. But let me keep going on this, all right? Hey, I understand though that as we go out and as we move forward, we're praying for opportunities for people to come to know Christ. We're praying for opportunities that down the road we can have those intentional conversations. It may not even be with you. It may not even be with, uh, 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 you be the one presenting the gospel, but you may be laying the, laying the groundwork, the foundational groundwork for someone else to come along and share the gospel. Now, with that being said, I hope you seize the opportunity that it may be you that God's calling to have that opportunity with too. So, so don't just assume it's someone else. It may be you because it's your neighbors that need to know Christ. But as we're praying for those opportunities, as we're seeing those opportunities, we're praying for those houses as we go down. Now, I understand some people may not want to get out and walk the neighborhoods. I understand you may not even be able to, but you know what? You have a front window. You can look out your front window. You can look at those houses. You can still pray for them. You can look at those, the houses as you go down and pray for them one at a time. I also understand that some people like to jog instead of walk, and it's hard praying for a house when you're going by them so fast. So maybe every day you just pick one house to pray for. You just say, you know what? I'm going to pray for the neighbor on my right. And you just go around the block day at a time praying for each house every day of the week. You know, maybe you go right, left, however you want to do that. Just pray for those individuals. Pray for those people in those homes so they can come to know uh, Jesus in a saving way. And if they're already Christians, pray that they're growing in their walk with God. Praying that, that every day that they're taking closer steps to God, getting closer and closer to being conformed in that identity of Christ. Okay, but also maybe what you want to do is just take take your phone, zoom in on a map, sideways or not, zoom in on your map, and when you look at it, just look at your house, pinpoint where your house is on a, on a virtual map, and then start picking homes in your neighborhood. You know, when you're done with your street, maybe you want to go a street over, maybe you want to go a couple of streets over. 
however you want to pray. It's also good if you know them by name, start jotting names down. Print out a map. Jot the names down so you know where your prayer time is each and every day as you go forward. Okay? Prayer walking. I think it's a great thing. I think it's something that we can easily do. We can implement in our life on a regular basis. And I don't think, and I think it's something to help us to get disciplined in the habit of praying. I know what you're thinking is you're sitting here saying, maybe I'm not a big prayer warrior. That's not my spiritual gift. I used to think that a lot too, but, but guess what? This is a discipline. And sometimes maybe just thinking of others and saying those short little prayers gets us in the habit as we move closer and closer and farther and farther along each and every day. Okay? So develop those disciplines as you're going. Just say a short prayer with it. Say a quick prayer. If you know the needs in the home, pray for those needs in the home. And you know what? You may be able to find out needs later. Why? Because you've already prayed as you move forward. I love in the book of Acts. When it talks about every time, every time after the Holy Spirit came that they gathered, uh, Peter and John in Acts chapter, I believe, 4 got arrested. And when they got released, they got together with the believers and they prayed for boldness. And when they prayed for boldness, the earth shook. And immediately they felt the Spirit in their life get stirred and they knew that what they were doing was right. And they were being very bold with it. And we need to be bold prayer warriors in our neighborhood. You want to see your neighborhood change? Pray for it. You want to see your community change? Pray for it. You want to see your leaders change? Pray for them. And when you pray for them, then God's going to move in their lives as we move forward. One of the greatest things that, uh, that I looked at a couple years ago when we were talking about missions, doing international missions, is that actually within the senior adult community, they were inviting senior adults to come over to Europe to go in neighborhoods where they were considering doing church plants. And they said that every neighborhood where these senior adults would come for a week and they would just walk the neighborhood, didn't know the language, didn't know the people, but they would just come and they would, they would walk the neighborhood and pray for it every day and pray for the apartments and they would pray for the homes. Every place where those people would go and they would pray, church plants saw people come to know Christ. And because they, they, they came through and they cultivated the soul to get it ready for the harvest and that's what we're doing at this point yeah we can't necessarily go out and have a crawfish bowl with our neighbors we can't go out and invite them over to a big barbecue but we can go and we can be praying for them and we can be praying for god to be working in their life as we cultivate as we as we put fertilizer in the soil so that when the time is right and the seeds planted the harvest will come and people will come to know christ in a saving way that's an outstanding way for us even in our own life, to help train our kids, train those senior adults, as we look for God to move, as we seek those opportunities, and as we pray for the barriers to be taken down. So church, keep inviting. Church, keep encouraging. Church, please keep seeking the things of God, even in the midst of this, so that God's kingdom can grow, and so that people can see that we act differently in these times not like the rest of the world because we have a hope in Christ. We have these hope moments every day as we talk about how we can go out and minister to others and encourage one another. So let me pray for you and then we're gonna have a couple of quick announcements to make sure you know what's going on this week and we'll be done. Dear God, I thank you for today and I thank you as we come forward here as we talk about praying for our neighborhoods, whether that's we're physically walking the streets or whether we're looking at our front window or we're looking on a map praying for our neighborhoods, Father. I pray and ask that you just reveal to us which houses we need to pray for very intently. Father, let us look for those needs in their life. Let us be able and willing whenever the time comes and these restrictions have been removed that we have an opportunity to witness to our neighborhood, to grow people in you in our neighborhood so that your kingdom can grow, so that our, our, our body of believers here can be encouraged and grow as well. But Father, you call us to be missionaries, each and every one of us. You tell us to go make disciples. And Father, that starts in our own neighborhood. And I understand that can be the hardest thing to do is to talk to the people we live, live next to each and every day. But Father, I pray and ask for those barriers to be taken down. I pray and ask for all those tendencies that we have and those fears that we have in our life, for those just to kind of dissolve. And Father, I pray and ask that as we're just bringing, lifting our neighbors up to you, Father, that you're moving in their life, that they're seeing your, your spirit move in their life, and 
you're thinking on things that are eternal, not just things of this life, with all the distractions of all the sports, all the distractions of, 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 uh, of going to work every day necessarily, Father. But I also understand there are other things that are weighing on heavy on their mind, like their finances. And Father, there's an opportunity for us to come, share Christ, encourage, especially lift them up in prayer during this time. And I pray and ask, Father, that as, uh, as we move forward, we're just lifting them up and that your spirit's moving in our neighborhoods, in our community here in Hammond. In your name we pray and ask it. Amen. You know, it may be one of those things, too, uh, as we're prayer walking, as we're going by, you can always write a little card. Just set it on their door and just say, hey, I prayed for you today. Maybe it's your name. Maybe maybe even if you don't want to be that bold, Willem Park Baptist Church prayed for you today. Sign your name at the bottom. You know, just say, hey, I prayed for your house today. Set it on the door. You don't have to talk to them. Don't have to knock on the door. Set it, set it somewhere where they can see it just to let them know that, hey, I prayed for you today. All right. Hey, a couple of things coming up this week. I just want to make you aware of Hope Moments Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock still. Uh, Whitney's World Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 o'clock. But then this Friday evening at 6 o'clock, we have our Good Friday service uh, via social media. And hopefully by then, I figured out how not to do one sideways. Okay. So uh, Good Friday service, 6 o'clock. It's going to be a great time, great experience. Please log in, watch, get your family around, do the watch parties again. And then also this Easter is coming up this Sunday. I know, Easter on Sunday. It's going to be probably one of those memorable Easter's that uh, you just going to tell your kids and grandkids about from this point forward, okay? But we're going to do church on Facebook Live, and we're going to do an 8.30 uh, traditional service, and we're going to do our 11 o'clock uh, contemporary service. So log in for either one of those or both of them if you want to. And uh, invite some people to come watch the Easter service as well online with you. All right. Great seeing you. Uh, go out, be encouraged. Go out and pray for your neighborhood. All right. Talk to y'all later.